Back in the 1960s, Julia Child popularized the cheese souffle, and for very good reason. It's a short ingredient list, really not that hard to make. You get that great top crust and that cheesy, creamy interior. It tastes great. But for some reason, great things from the past seem to disappear without a trace. So let's go into the test kitchen with Bridget, and let's start a cheese souffle resurrection. You know, one of the first things I learned to cook in the early 70s was the souffle, like right. I'm sure you did too. And I was told a lot of things about it, which hopefully are not true. They're very finicky. You have to be careful because they'll That's fall right. in the oven. You have 90 seconds to serve them before they collapse or right. take them out of the oven. You have to get the egg whites just right, and you have to be a master chef and do it hundreds of times. So it's one of those things I used to make. It came out of my repertoire because I go, oh, it's, it's too, too finicky. fussy. Too yep. fussy. But when I did it right, they were fabulous. That's right. Yeah, there's a lot of mythology behind the souffle, cheese or otherwise, but it really just boils down to making a bechamel, a very simple sauce that you stabilize with egg whites. You whip the egg whites, fold it in, and bake it. And we're going to also add some cheese to make it even better. All right? You make it sound so easy. <laughs> it is incredibly easy. We are going to make a sauce, but let's talk a little bit first about our baking dish. This is a two-quart souffle baking dish. Just greased it with some vegetable oil spray here. And here's where we're going to start introducing cheese at the very beginning. Because one of the problems that we found with cheese souffle is they didn't really taste like cheese. They tasted like flour. So we're going to add a little bit of Parmesan. This is two tablespoons. And use it to dust the dish all the way around. This is going to create kind of that nice Parmesan crust as it cooks. All right. So let's get that souffle started, and we're going to start with a bechamel. Now, for a lot of classic recipes, they use six tablespoons of each butter and flour. It's a little over a cup of milk. Well, we found that ratio actually made a souffle that was just too heavy and actually dulled the cheese flavor. So we're going to reduce the amount of butter and flour in our cheese souffle. This is four tablespoons of unsalted butter. This goes right in over medium heat, and here's our four tablespoons of all-purpose flour. Now we're going to season this. This is a quarter teaspoon of paprika and a quarter teaspoon of salt. I've got an eighth of a teaspoon of cayenne pepper. We're using two kinds of pepper here. We've got cayenne and white pepper. This is also an eighth of a teaspoon. All right, we've got a little bit of nutmeg. That's pretty traditional. It's just a pinch of fresh ground nutmeg. And we'll whisk this mixture together and wait on that butter to finish melting. So we should probably define what a bechamel is mm -hmm. for anyone under 40 out there watching the show. <laughs> well, it's a classic sauce. It's also known as one of the mother sauces because they use it to create other sauces. You start off with a roux, which is what we're doing here, equal parts flour and butter. And then once that's cooked together, you add milk. And depending on the ratio of ingredients, you'll get a thinner sauce or a thicker sauce. So this is melted. I'm going to go ahead and add our flour mixture. There we go. Whew. And we'll cook this quickly. We're not looking to color the flour here, which you do with some other roux. We're basically just going to cook this for about a minute until the raw flour taste is gone. All right, so now that the flour is cooked, we can go ahead and start adding the milk. And we want to add it very gradually. This is one and a third cups of whole milk. If you pour it in all at once, you'll create these big lumps. And if you add a little bit at a time, you can work them out. There we go. And now we're going to bring this up to the simmer and let it cook for just about a minute, and it should start to thicken. You can see how this is nice and thickened. And it's time to take the bechamel off of the burner. We're going to slide it over here to a cooler burner. All right, so now we can add our cheese, and we're using two different kinds. This is six ounces of grated Gruyere cheese, pretty classic, and five tablespoons of Parmesan. Now, Parmesan has a really, really strong, bold flavor, so that allows us to add more cheese flavor without compromising the texture of the souffle. All right, so we just want to whisk this until all the lumps are gone. The cheese is completely melted. Smells good. I know. All right, so this looks beautiful, nice and smooth, but we need to let this cool down for about 10 minutes before we move on to the next step. All right, Chris, our cheese mixture has cooled down for about 10 minutes, so now we can start separating eggs. And we're using six eggs in total for this recipe. Of course, all of them are separated. I've gone ahead and done the first four here. 
work on the last two. Now it's really important anytime that you're separating eggs and you need to beat the egg whites to really stiff peaks that you don't contaminate it with any of the fat from the egg yolks. So what I like to do is crack the egg into a separate dish and then use the shell to get rid of as much of that white as I can. And then you can just drop the yolk in there and the whites go in here. And that way, if I crack an egg and I'm a little bit too vigorous with it, then I've only ruined one egg. I haven't ruined the rest of them. So, last egg. Another good tip is it's always best to separate really cold eggs because the egg yolks don't tend to break as easily as warm eggs. So, got our egg whites there, egg yolks here. We're gonna go ahead and put the egg yolks into our cheese mixture along with one and a half teaspoons of fresh parsley. Gonna add a nice little herbal note there. Just whisk this together. And see, that's why we also had to let this cool down before we added the egg yolks. Otherwise, we would have scrambled eggs. All right, time to start beating these egg whites. Again, six egg whites into my standing mixer, along with a little bit of cream of tartar. This is a quarter teaspoon of cream of tartar. And that's an acid, and it helps to break down the protein strands of the eggs just a little bit so that they can expand before they break. So we're going to beat this together on medium-low speed just until the egg whites start to look a little foamy. And that's about a minute. All right, so now we need to get some volume into the egg whites. And the amount that we beat the egg whites has a direct effect on the final souffle. So I'm going to turn this to medium-high. We're going to let these beat until they're nice, stiff peaks. They still look glossy, and that's going to take three to four minutes. All right, let's take a look at the egg whites. You can see that they're a nice, stiff peak here. There you go. That would be a stiff peak. That's yes. right. Now, typically, if you're making any souffle, you take a little bit of the egg whites and you add it to the cheese mixture. Just lighten it. That's right. And then you gingerly fold in the rest of the egg whites. And that's because the, one of the myths is that you're going to bust the volume of the souffle the more that you work the whites. Well, that's true up to a certain extent. But we beat these to stiff peaks. So now we can just add all the cheese mixture right in there. I know, look at you, you're going oh, you're crazy. You're blowing my mind. <laughs> this is not how I was taught. And we're just going to beat this in using the mixer for about 15 this seconds. This is insane. I know, but this is to really prove huh. that you cannot mess up the souffle. Okay. That's it, Chris. We'll go ahead and pour this into our souffle dish that we prepared earlier. And I only want to pour in enough so that it reaches just about an inch from the rim of the pan. By lowering the amount that we put in the dish to begin with, we didn't have to worry about overflowing. So just another tablespoon of Parmesan on top, and this is going to give us a beautiful browned crust. Now this is going to go in a 350 oven. That's the perfect temperature for about 30 minutes, maybe 35 minutes. It's going to give us some great browned color, but it's not going to overcook the center. And I'm looking for 170 degrees in the internal temperature. Now once I put it in the oven, you can dance around the oven, you can yell at the oven. That's another one of those myths that the more noise you make, your souffle will deflate. Well, as we found out, there's so much stability in the egg whites that it really won't deflate. You can make as much noise as you want, Woo -woo, Party time. <laughs> All right, off to the oven. You know, one of the things we've been talking about is stability of egg white foams, but we haven't really talked about one of the secrets of this recipe, which is cream of tartar. Egg whites are made up of water, about 90%, and proteins, about 10%. When you beat them with a mixer, what happens is those proteins start to unravel or denature and form a foam. Now, the amino acids that make up the proteins have a negative charge, and those charges repel each other because they're all negative, which means they're easy to whip up, but they don't form an elastic, stable foam. So what you want to do is slow that process down. Cream of tartar has a positive charge. That attracts the negative charges in the amino acids and the egg whites, so they bond closer together. It takes a little bit more time to beat them up, but you end up with a much more stable elastic foam. The second thing is once those proteins have unraveled the nature, they form a coating around the air bubbles, and that coating includes water. Now what happens? Well, there are sulfur atoms in those proteins, and they attract each other, and they start to squeeze out the air and the water and the foam, and that ends up with water at the bottom of the bowl if the egg whites sit too long. There is a way to get around that problem, and once again, it's cream of tartar. 
Cream of tartar includes hydrogen atoms, which interferes with that sulfide bonding. Way back in the 70s, when I was learning to make souffles, we used a copper bowl for exactly the same reasons, and that's because the copper atoms interfere with the sulfur atoms, and they don't bond so closely together. So for perfect egg whites that make a really stable foam, add a pinch of cream of tartar, and you get absolutely perfect results. All right. There it is in all of its glory. <laughs> so I checked it just a moment ago, and it did register 170. It was a little over 171, but that's perfect. Now, if you don't want to check it with an instant read thermometer, you can take two spoons and just crack in through the top, and it should look still moist, mm -hmm. but you don't want it to be soupy. So this is perfect. Okay. We have about five minutes until it starts to deflate. So I'm going to finish it off, a little bit more parsley, and... That's it. But you can look at that color, Chris. Mm. Oh. That looks great. That's beautiful. Get some of this crust. You can see how moist the eggs are. They're not overcooked. Mmm. This is delicious. And mm. so you do get a little bit of the flavor of the paprika mm. and the cayenne, but it's not overwhelming. Mm. So the secret to great cheese souffle is have Bridget make it for you. <laughs> So we added bechamel, it wasn't quite as thick. We took down the butter flour ratio to the milk. We used two kinds of cheese, Parmesan and Gruyere for a little extra flavor. And then we beat the egg whites, we did two things. We used cream of tartar, which made it more stable. And we also beat them to a stiff piece, which also made the souffle more stable as well. So there you have it from America's Test Kitchen, your kitchen. We've resuscitated a favorite from the 60s and 70s, cheese souffle, and this one is not gonna fall in the oven. And you can get this recipe, all the recipes from the season, tastings, testings, and watch selected episodes of this show at our website, which is americastestkitchen.com.